Hi, this is 72 Daystar. Just getting ready to take a look at the moon with my, this is my 66 millimeter uh, Williams Optics refractor, and I have that on my Williams Optic Easy Touch mount, along with my ETX 90. It's just the field scope, just the OTA tube assembly. Uh, but they work well together. This has very narrow angle of view, very high magnification. This has a very wide angle of view. I use it with a two inch 33 millimeter eyepiece. It makes for a good system. I can find it here, take a close look if I want here. So, but first I gotta clean my lenses and then I'm gonna get to it. Okay, I think we're back in business here. I've got my laptop. Um, here's one of my favorite guys on YouTube, Conference Report. He does philosophy. Great guy. If you want to subscribe to him, Conference Report. Good stuff, if you're into philosophy. Anyways, I brought this out. I brought this out so that I could use one of my... i step out of camera here for a moment. Another great service for amateur astronomers. Hi, doggy. The moon, virtual moon atlas. It's a free download. So freeware. Virtual moon atlas. It comes in three varieties. Okay, and it shows you where the moon is right now. So I can see this is the area that's going to be interesting along the Terminator. Okay, so this is Plato. God knows if you can see that. And another area that might be interesting is down here where we have Clavius, which is a really great formation. So that's kind of our goals there, very modest goals, just to take a look at what Plato looks like and what Clavius looks like. This is the formation here. See the Terminator here. And also notice these small craterlets. Well, this is a full-fledged crater here, but these would count as craterlets. Hi, doggy. Within the much larger Clavius. Again, here's Plato. It's distinctive because the floor is much darker than the surrounding floor of the uh, Mare and the mountains, the highlands that are around it. So it should stand out fairly easily too. You can see these things in a pair of binoculars. It's really not that difficult. Focus. Oh, there, that's pretty focused. Okay, so there's where we're going. That's 21 times on this camera. If I crank it up, it starts to really lose resolution, but you can see the mare, or sea from Latin. Let's look across the top, you can see sort of a narrow band. That's uh, mare frigoris. See on the right side, the very round one, and that's Mare Crisium. Um, so the areas we're going to be interested in are in the north, where we see oh, just on the edge of the Terminator, by Terminator I mean the shadow, there's a round um, area that's Plato, and we're also going to be looking down in the, in the southern part for Clavius. That's what I showed you on the computer, if you saw it. I'm not sure. Okay, I don't know if that's focused, but this is through the small scope. It's only about between or nine and three quarters times magnification. So I'm going to move over to the Maksudov. The problem is getting this to focus through there. For some reason it's focusing on the central obstruction. You can see that's causing the black dot, I think. If I focus, it goes out. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to just try to get it in stills, I think.
that people often comment and uh, other um, other YouTubers that do uh, astronomy, they always say, what's it going to look like compared through the camera, through the eye, uh, with your naked eye? The planets and moon, you can't get as good as actually looking through the lens, through a camera. But for deep sky objects like nebula and, and galaxies and so on, um, photographs can do a, a lot better job of bringing out detail and people are often disappointed with the hobby of amateur astronomy because when they finally do get to look at what's in the sky they see a lot of faint fuzzies and a lot of it, uh, that's what it's about just seeing that little bit more detail, the patience of coming back again and again and then maybe one lucky night you get that little more detail um, from your telescope than you did uh, uh, and that's based on having more experience, seeing that particular object, and it's also uh, being lucky and being out there on the right night where you've got good skies. So I hope, wish good skies to you. When it gets a little darker, I'm going to come out again and take a look and see if I can get any more detail out of the moon. Uh, it's good to study the moon when the... Uh, when it's in the sky and it's still light out, because you can use your reference book and look. But when you to get the best image and see the best contrast, you definitely want to be out when it's when it's dark, and then it really shows its stuff. Uh, the sky looks like it's going to be a little bit disturbed tonight, but that's pretty typical for around here. Anyways, hey Bo, got anything to say? Nothing. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you.